Okay, so graphing polynomial functions. I'm going to talk about um, what polynomials are, but actually before I talk about what they are, I'm going to talk about some things that are not polynomials, what they aren't. So um, you want to, uh, you, you can't have variable exponents, so no variable exponent. So if you see something like this, 2 to the x, that's not a polynomial, okay? No um, variables in um, denominators. So 2 over x is not a polynomial, okay? And then also no variables inside of radicals. Okay, so there's some different rules about places that variables can't be. The square root of x doesn't also doesn't count as a uh, as a polynomial, at least not in that form. Okay. All right. So a monomial is a polynomial with one term. Okay. So it's a little cluster of um, numbers and sometimes variables as well. So some examples: um, seven is a monomial. It's just a number. But it's a it's a monomial, or um, so yeah. This is an example here, or three um, x. That is a monomial. It's just one term, okay. Or if I had negative fourteen x y z to the second, that is a monomial. It's one cluster, right? Okay. All right. So one term, in other words, okay. A binomial has two terms just like a bicycle has two tires. So it might look something like this. It might be seven plus X. That is a binomial, okay? Or um, let's see, X squared plus three Y Z is another binomial. It's got two different terms, two different clusters, okay? Trinomial, just like a tricycle, is gonna have three terms, just like a tri tricycle has three tires. Okay, so x plus y plus z. Right? And I won't write other examples, but three terms there. Okay, all right, so I want to talk about con some conventions uh, about how to name um, polynomials. So let's talk about naming them by degree. Okay, so if something is, is zeroth degree, this might be a little counterintuitive, but the number seven is actually um, zeroth degree. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted there. Um, someone came in my room, but uh, I think I was saying the number seven is zeroth degree. Um, and it is because um, you could write it like this. You could write it as 7x to the zeroth. Anything to the zeroth degree equals one. So that means x to the zeroth equals one. So um, when we say the degree of a, a polynomial, that's referring to the degree of, uh, of the, of the uh, variables. Um, and so since this doesn't have a variable, you'd have to add in an x to the zeroth to kind of think of it as zeroth degree, okay? So the name of this, it's a constant. So any standalone number is just a constant. Three is a constant, 18 is a constant. Um, all right, so um, a first degree um, polynomial might look something like this. These are all just examples, okay? So I've got an x to the first in there, right? This is first degree x, so that makes this a first degree polynomial. And I'll get more into the degrees later, but just talking about the names, this would be if we graphed um, y equals 3x plus 2, it would be a line, a straight line. So this is going to be a linear polynomial, okay? A first degree polynomial is linear. A second degree, that's what we spent whole the whole uh, last chapter on, might look something like this. And if we graphed y equals 4x squared, it would be a parabola, and it's a quadratic um, polynomial, okay? Third degree might look something like this. And we haven't we haven't studied these yet, but we, we will. Um, these are called cubic polynomials. Okay, okay and I'm not going to write out, uh, I'll just write out x to the fourth, x to the fifth, and x to the sixth as my examples for the last three here. Okay, so fourth degree is going to be called a quartic 
polynomial, four quarters and a dollar, quartic, okay? And then quintic, if you think of, if you've got five twins, well, five siblings that are born at the same time, they're, they're quints, okay? And then beyond that, these are the ones that you really need to know, okay? Beyond that, we're just going to call anything else. There are names for these, but we don't want to spend all year memorizing the rest of them. You need to know these ones. Beyond that, we can just say sixth degree um, or seventh degree or whatever it is. Okay. But these are very common ones that you'll see in the book, and you do need to know what they mean. Okay. So um, let's name the uh, polynomial by the degree and the number of terms. Okay. So. The number of terms, I can see, okay, there's three terms. So this is going to be a trinomial, okay? And then let's talk about the degree, okay? So what um, I'm looking at, the degree of these different terms, this is second degree here for that first term, okay? The middle term is fourth degree. And this last term is zeroth degree because it's just a constant. Okay, so the way we do this is you just take um, the highest degree term, so in that case that's that middle one, and that's going to determine the degree of the whole polynomial. Okay, so this is going to, this has three terms, and it's fourth degree. Okay, but we want to use these, uh, these these vocabulary words we've just been going over. So three terms, that would be trinomial. Um, and fourth degree is quartic. And actually, I messed up the order here. I should have written it the other way. We wouldn't say a trinomial quartic. We'd say a quartic trinomial. So you actually do the degree first. Um, so let me move that over here. And that's what we want to call this, a quartic trinomial. It is a uh, fourth degree, three-term po polynomial, but better name for that, quartic trinomial. Okay. Okay, there's two problems on the top of the next page that um, are the same kind of thing, so you can pause the video and try them. Um, so... Um, here we go on this first one. I can see, okay, this is a trinomial. It's got three terms. And then I just go with the highest degree term, which would be this first term is a third degree term. So I've got third degree, third terms, three terms. So this is going to be a cubic trinomial. Um, next up, um, all right, so this one's interesting. Um, some people might look at this and say, oh, it's going to be fourth degree, um, but it's actually not. So when you've got different um, exponents in the same term, um, you got to take that into account, okay? Now, this could be written, by the way, 7 squared is just 49. So you can write this polynomial in this format, right? So now when I'm looking at this, um, the, this, the exponent that's attached to the 7 doesn't really affect anything, okay? But I've got to take the 2 and the 3 into account. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to, um, I'm going to add them together. So this is actually a 5th degree term, okay? because I've got a, a squared variable and a cubed variable. So together, 2 plus 3 is 5. And this, this is fourth degree. And the highest degree term takes precedence, so that means that the whole polynomial is fifth degree. And it's a binomial. There's two different, two different terms there. So this is going to be a fifth degree binomial. Fifth degree is quintic, so this is going to be a quintic binomial. Okay. All right. Um, standard form for polynomials, the terms are going to be arranged in descending order of, of degree. OK. 
Okay, so if you look at this, um, this example, that's in standard form because I got third degree, second degree, and zeroth degree. Actually, this one is too because I got fifth degree, then fourth degree. But if we look at that, um, this example from the previous page, um, this is not in standard form because the highest degree term's in the middle. So in, in standard form, this would say y to the fourth plus 3x to the second minus 7. Okay. All right, so this one's not in, uh, in standard form either. I want to put the highest degree term first. That would be 4x to the third, then 2x squared, and then negative 6 is the lowest degree out of those. This is standard form of that same polynomial. Okay. All right. So let's look at some different types of, um, of polynomials. If we, you graph a linear, um, a linear polynomial um, function or equation, it's first degree and you'll get a straight line. Quadratic's gonna be second degree. So we've seen a lot of these and, and, uh, and studied lines and parabolas a lot, okay? Um, it, once we're moving to um, third degree, we'll get an S-curve looking um, graph, okay? So, um, for, and then there's more turns the higher degree we get, okay? So if you look at second degree, there's one, this is called a turning point. It's the vertex, sure, it's the vertex. But it's a turning point because my graph is going down and then that's where it turns and it starts to go up, okay? So if I look at a cubic here, this has two different turning points. So I'll just call these turning points. And yeah, for a parabola, that's the vertex. But I couldn't call these vertices on the cubic because it's not the, the highest uh, place right there. And that's not the minimum either. Okay, but they are, are called turning points. That's where my, my uh, graph turns around. So on a quartic, we're going to have those turning points. And then on a quintic, and we could go on with this uh, with this with this pattern, a six degree would just turn one more time, okay? So if you notice, um, the number of turning points is one less than the degree, okay? So um, here, I'll put it like this, turning points plus one equals the degree of the, the function. Okay, so you know, one turning point, second degree, two point turning points, third degree, and so forth. Okay, all right. Um, okay, now let's talk about end behavior. So um, end behavior, this is the direction that a function goes at the far, um, the far ends. So the far, I mean the far left end and right ends of its graph. So I'm going to just say the far left and right of that ends of its graph, okay? So I'm interested in what's happening here and here, okay? Um, so this one, if I'm putting this in layman's terms, this one is going to start, if I'm just reading this from left to right, I'm gonna say it's starting here, okay? So it's starting down here um, low. It starts down, right? And then at the end of the graph, it's, it's going up, so it's going to end high up there, okay? So we, we, that's a, we want to say this in a mathematical way, but that is what is happening, okay? So um, on this xy axis, let's make this an xy axis. All right, now it's the next y-axis. There's four um, different directions you can think of, north, south, east, and west, but we're not going to call them that. So I'm going to the right on the x-axis. We're heading towards infinity, okay? And on the y-axis, we're heading up towards infinity. We could keep climbing up and up on the y-axis. We never get to infinity, but that's the direction we're going, okay? And so then when we're going to the left, you know, we got negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, we're approaching negative infinity, infinity as we go left on that x-axis. And same thing going down on the y-axis, okay? So think about those as directions on the x and y-axis, okay? So here's how I'm going to say this, th this part. Um, I'm going to try to describe this mathematically. So if you think about the x-y pairs, at the end of the graph, as I'm going left on the graph, my, my function goes down, okay? 
So in other words, as I go left, I'm going down, okay? Um, now, um, let's put this mathematically. As x approaches negative infinity, okay, so that means as I'm going left on the x-axis, I'm going to go down on the y-axis, right? So as my x's are decreasing at the end here, my y's are going to decrease as well. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And you know you can think of that as you go left, you go down. That's what's happening at this end, OK? Now let's talk about this part. As we're going right on the x-axis, we're going to go up, OK? So we're going right and up at the end. And we just want to say that also in a mathematical way. So as x approaches positive infinity, y is going to, so as my x's get bigger at the end, the y's are going to get bigger too. y also approaches positive infinity. Okay, just a fancy way of saying as you go right, you go up. Okay, so there is how to describe end behavior. So the end behavior is always going to start, it's, you're always going to say what happens when you go left. You're either going to go up or down for now, right? Um, so that's always going to be the same, and then you just have to decide, is it going towards positive infinity or negative infinity? Is it going up or down as you go left? And then on the other end, it's going to say this, and then again, you have to decide if it's going up or down. Okay. okay. So let's describe the end behavior of this. So I'm thinking, okay, here's negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach negative infinity, okay? So for this end, as x, yeah, well, I'll do it up here because I don't have space, but as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Okay, so that means as I go left, I go down. As I go right, I'm going to go down. So as x approaches positive infinity, as I'm going right on the x-axis, I'm going to go down on the x-axis. Okay, and that is my end behavior. So for the time being, other things can happen at the ends of the graph, but the ones you're going to see, you just have to decide the end of this positive or negative infinity on, on, on either end. Okay. All right. Um, let's look at um, some patterns here. Okay. So um, if you have a, a, a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree, well, let's think of the simplest possible... Um, equation where that's true. Okay, I have an odd degree here because it's x to the first, right? And then I've got a positive leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the, the coefficient of the, of the highest degree term. And so in this case, my leading coefficient would be 1, right? And the degree is also 1. So y equals x, that's just a line. It goes through the point 0, 0, and it has a slope of 1. It's going to look something like that, OK? So um, this is the simplest possible um, equation I could write with those characteristics. But it's going to have the same end behavior as any, um, as, any, um, as any function with an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, OK? Um, so let's think of an equation with a negative leading coefficient and an odd degree. Here's the, the simplest one that I can come up with. So hey, that's another straight line. It's going to go through 0, 0. It's going to have a slope of negative 1. So it's going to be going down at a 45 degree angle. Okay, And this is all functions with those characteristics are going to follow that pattern as well. Okay, So now I want a positive leading coefficient and an even degree. So hey, I can't use first degree anymore. Let's use second degree. Well, I know what this looks like. That's my parent graph for a parabola, okay? And then if I want an even one with a negative leading coefficient, that's just a parabola that opens down from the origin, okay? And now I've got myself a map, okay? So, you know, you can describe the end behavior of a function if you know what it looks like, but you can also describe it if you don't know what it looks like based on this information, okay? So let's take this next example. Now, you know, you might not have this chart always in front of you. I do right now. But let's say I, uh, I didn't have it in front of me. Well, I'd be looking, okay, this has a negative leading coefficient.
okay, and it has an even degree, and then I just be think, oh, sorry, it's off screen there, negative leading coefficient and even degree, and I'd be thinking in my head, well, what's the simplest equation that has those characteristics? And it would be y equals negative x squared. I know what that looks like. So it's going to be that end behavior, okay? And this one would even be a pain to graph with, uh, with a graphing calculator because you'd have to play around with the zoom a lot. I mean, the y-intercept is going to be 999, okay? Um, and it's going to have a lot of turning points, 27 of them. Okay, so um, I just have to describe this end behavior. Okay, so as I, um, as I go left, as x approaches negative infinity, y is going to go towards negative infinity as well. So as I go left, I go down, right? And as I go right, I go down. So as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And there is our end behavior. Okay, one more here. So here, I'll keep that chart on screen. But again, even if I didn't have the chart, I just think, okay, positive leading coefficient. And this is going to be an odd degree. And then I'd be thinking, what's the simplest possible equation? Well, let's make the positive leading coefficient just 1. And the degree can be 1 as well. So y equals x, hey, it's this end behavior. So as I go left, I go down. As I right, go right, I go up. As x approaches negative infinity, that's the left. y approaches negative infinity, that's down. As x approaches positive infinity, y is going to approach positive infinity. As I go right, I go up. And there we go. And that's it for today. See you next time.